Today I'm gonna show you how to take a day photo and transform it into night photo using Photoshop. Hey there, my name is Ali. Today I'm gonna show you how to take a day photo and transform it into night. Okay, we'll start off by this photo. This photo is a bit challenging because it's, it has a very bright sky. So the first thing is removing the sky. So in this case, I'm gonna use the magic wand. I'm gonna click here, hold shift to add, click here, hold shift to add, and click here. Then I'm gonna add a layer mask. I got the opposite of what I wanted. So control I, it gives you the inverse of what you want. So now we have the photo without the sky. Okay, the second thing is I'm gonna use these two skies. I'm gonna start with this one. This will be our main sky. I'm gonna pull it up like that. Maybe something like that. Okay, let me put it below so I can see where is it. I want to have some sort of like orange light in my photo. So I'm gonna place it somewhere here. Somewhere like that is gonna be good. Okay, let me add the next photo on top of it, this one. I'm using this one because I like the orange clouds it has. Something like that, maybe. And let me put this one into... Let's try overlay. Okay, overlay is good, but it's too bright. So I rasterized it. I rasterized this one also. This one, sorry, it made it too dark. As you can see, it darkened everything up. So I'm going to go to image adjustments, curves. And I'm just going to pull this one up, something like that. So it doesn't darken the photo. So when I close and open, it just adds the color. It doesn't darken too much. One more thing I want to do. I want to add some light here. I'm going to do it after I fix this one. So these two, let's group them. Let's call this sky. And this layer, let's call it mountain. Okay. So now we need this mountain to match this one back. Okay. One thing I like to do is I always like to add black and white layer on top. Okay. So now we have a black and white layer. Everything is black and white. Okay, it's actually painting for the eye to look at that. But as you can see, the sky here is dark, 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 and the mountain is too bright. So I used this one so that when I add a curves adjustment and link it below and start doing my like adjustments, I can see much better. So I'm gonna darken a lot from here. This is darkening the dark areas already. I don't want stuff to go completely black like this. So I'm going to pull this one a little bit up. I don't want stuff to be burned out. Okay, let me pull again this part, something like that. And finally, let's pull the highlight down like that. This one should be below the highlight. You should always respect the nature of the curve. Like you can't have a curve like that. This is like not good. If you, it goes up and down. It should go in a linear way somehow. Okay, so something like that. I guess we're good like that, but it's a little bit too dark, as you can see. I actually don't like this rock here, so I'm just going to go to the lasso tool. I'm just going to do my selection like that. Oh, I forgot that part, sorry. So shift and just add. And then I'm going to stand on the mask itself. Make sure you're on black color. Then alt backspace to paint. Okay, so now I got rid of that part I did not like. Okay, this is the curves adjustment. This is what it made. Let me lower its opacity a little bit. I guess 90% is good. As you can see now, your eyes, this is matching what's behind nicely. In values. Values is the levels of black and white. You see now, when I close the black and white, I don't need the black and white anymore. But the color is totally, like, messed up. It's not matching the blue sky. We have a blue sky. This is too red. Okay. If you notice what I said, too red. So, we go to hue saturation. Let's jump to the red channel. Let's desaturate the red a lot. Something like that. Okay. So, we got rid of most of the red. Another hue saturation, and let's des desaturate the whole thing, not only the red, the whole thing. And now it's time to add the color similar to the sky. This will go by a color balance layer, where you, let's jump to the shadows maybe. Let's add some blue and some cyan. Obviously, this is blue and cyan, more cyan. I guess the cyan is doing, because this, is, this was too reddish. So the opposite of red is cyan. So adding cyan naturally will take off out the red 
and add the color which is similar to the environment okay let's try adding a curves adjustment layer this time go to the red channel this is red opposite of red is cyan a little bit of cyan let's go to the blue channel and a little bit of blue and okay let me zoom out zoom in let's see it Oh, this is like the <laughs> darkening part. You see, if we do the color first, this is the color. These four are coloring. You see, if I did the coloring before the black and white, it's going to be so hard to fix. Like, who would imagine that this is the right colors for the photo? But after darkening it, it made much sense. Okay, but I believe it still needs some blue. So I'm going to go to a color balance, but this time I'm going to go to the shadows. And I'm going to add some blue in the shadows. You see what happens when you add a lot of blue in the shadows. Some cyan. More blue. I guess now we're good. This, These are the color. Like this is the black and white. These are taking out the color from the photo. These are adding the new color to the photo. Okay. So now we're done with blending the two things together. Let's go back to the sky. I said before I wanted to add something to the sky. So a new layer. Make sure this layer is either soft layer, uh, soft light or overlay, sorry. Let's take a brush. Let's sample a bright color from here, from the highlights itself. Make it maybe more brighter. Or let's use a dark one. But I'm going to change this to linear dodge add. Let's lower the flow. What linear dodge does is that after you color for the first time, I'm coloring now. If you color for another time, things will be brighter. If you color for another one, things will keep on going brighter and brighter every time you press more clicks okay and let's try overlay actually let's try screen okay screen i like screen but it's too strong just lower the opacity a lot something like that okay so now we added some sort of a light coming from behind these rocks okay let's group this this is the sky this is the mountain Okay, let's draw some sort of a torch. Okay, first, let me like take this man. Let's apply layer mask. I'm going to press Ctrl J to have two copies. I'm going to close this one. I'm leaving this one in case I make a mistake. I have a copy to go back to. I'm going to just select his arm. Something like that. Oh, sorry, I have five feather. It must be zero. Select his arm. Something like that. Then I'm going to press Ctrl T. I'm going to hold Alt and move this point here. So that when I rotate his arms, like that, things doesn't go wrong. Okay. But now, obviously, we lost a lot of detail of what is behind his arms. So I'm going to open the layer below. So this one, it got back what we had. But it's too bright. As you can see, because these effects are only affecting this one. So I can do one thing. I can take all these effects, hold Alt, Copy them here on top of the other one. Then hold Alt and make sure they are all linked below by holding Alt and clicking on the bottom of the layer. So now they are all linked on the layer below. However, in this layer below, I need to erase his arm so he doesn't have like three hands. Okay, so now the guy has to like one of his hands is pointing upward. Why I made it like that? So that I will add a layer on top of everything. And I'll draw some sort of a, like a, a light object, light beam, something like that. Let me give it a color, like let's say a very dark blue, dark cyan. Okay, I need to take the color out of it a little bit. Control U and desaturate, darken a little bit. I'm going to press this one, lock transparent pixels. I'm going to go to the brush, make sure it's black and white. Make sure I'm on normal, 100% opacity. With a very small brush, I'm just going to paint some black here. Press X to change to white. Some black here. Some white there. Some white at the edge. Okay. Like this photo, it's going to be from far away, so you can't really see what's happening. Now I'm going to take the polygonal lasso tool, add 5% feather. You're going to know why now. And I'm going to add some sort of a, a light beam like that. It's, it should be hitting, like, let's say, from here. Something like that. All the way here. Okay. Now we need to, like, decide what color we're going to use. A bright orange, for example. 
and let me go to the gradient make sure it's on linear dodge and make sure it's the circular gradient and make sure you have the transparency and dither effect on and let's add a new layer and let me pull like that pull another one pull another one pull another one another one another one keep pulling then use maybe a brighter color pull 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 okay so now we have the light beam but it still has a sharp edges to so going to filter blur gaussian blur is gonna fix it a little bit and finally adding a layer mask using a brush a soft brush of course and just erasing some of its edges will make it much more realistic okay so now we have our light if you want to change the color of the light just standing on the layer pressing ctrl u you can always play around make it more red make it like whatever color you want blue cyan any color you want just ctrl u remember i'll make i'll make it more to the orange it's too yellow i made it more to the orange okay now it's time to add some inscriptions on this wall so i'm gonna pull this photo okay this is a photo here first in order to edit it you have to right click rasterize then using the magic wand i'm gonna select all the white here and there make sure you're holding shift every time you press a click and here we go oh we have some white here you can actually increase the tolerance let me go back okay increase the tolerance before doing that so you make selection of more white making sure all the white is selected and delete okay so now we don't have any whites okay now let me separate them i don't like the the thing around of it i'm gonna delete this and i'm gonna delete magic one this also we have some white lines so i'm gonna use an eraser make sure it's like 100 percent hardness so i'm just gonna erase these edges here and there around the image there are many ways like easier ways to cut stuff but i'm just telling you the fast way okay i'm gonna press ctrl u you can make it like completely black like that or completely white in this case i'm gonna go colorize i'm gonna give it 50 make sure when you're colorizing something it's 50 so that when i add the color i want the golden color somehow uh, it's somewhere the gold color is between yellow and orange okay something like that then i'm gonna control t let's make it like that let's rotate it around stretch it out a little bit i want it to be on that wall where the light is hitting let's put it in screen mode okay that's the screen mode let's try lowering the opacity something like that okay so now we have some wall inscriptions and let's edit the whole image now together by adding a curves adjustment on top of everything i like to take the blacks open them up the shadows pull them a little bit down and take the highlights make them even brighter something like that okay then i want to brighten the whole scene the whole scene needs a little bit of brightening so with a curves adjustment i'm just going to brighten the whole thing like that okay then let's go to the coloring part curves adjustment i'm going to go to the red channel i'll add some red in the highlights blue channel add some yellow in the highlights opposite of it some blue in the shadows let's go to the green i'm gonna add some magenta in the highlights let's go to the red maybe some cyan in the shadows okay so now this is the coloring we made okay let me hold ctrl alt shift then press e this merges everything into a new separate layer like that we can go to filter camera row filter i want to bring focus to that point so i'm gonna take the radial filter i'm gonna draw a circle around that area something like that now if i want to have focus in that area make sure you're doing an opposite color of the photo so i'm gonna make this much warmer something like that i'm gonna make it brighter i'm gonna make it more contrasty by reducing blacks increasing whites even more contrast 
make it more clear you can make it like faded or clear i'm gonna make it more clear and remove some of the dehaze make it even more saturated okay so now as you can see this area is now much clearer the eyes are gonna be attracted here more okay let's do the opposite to the opposite which is going to camera row filter i'm gonna draw a black circle around the photo by the vignette so this is what the vignette does just a, a small effect dehaze you can reduce it to remove fog or make things clearer in this case i want to make things clearer let's go here the clarity you can increase make things very clear or make things soft in this case i guess making things soft will make it look better and i'm gonna brighten the whole image a little bit maybe the shadows brighten them up a little bit as well and press ok so now it's much better one last thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add a new layer make sure it's an overlay take a brush with a low flow and a low opacity I'm gonna sample a highlight color from here, a bright orange color maybe, something like that. And then I'm gonna paint wherever I believe there should be highlights. So I want highlights here, so I'm gonna paint here. Some here also. Some highlights here. Here. Here, we have some highlights on this mountain here, like that. Some here. If I don't like the color, I can always change it up. Some here. Like wherever you believe the light is hitting And maybe something like that Something like that Okay, I believe the color is too yellowish I want it more reddish So control U If you look here from yellow to red You move to the left So a little bit to the left And okay And this is the highlight layer we created And that's it for today's tutorial If you have any comments or questions Make sure you put them in the comment section down below Thank you